this very first chapter of the course dedicated to evaluation of the position, uh, I'm going to discuss um, what is, in my opinion, the most important factor when uh, evaluating the position. So the king safety. Uh, after all, when your uh, king is unsafe, you stop worrying about other aspects of the game. So the pawn formation doesn't matter all that much. Uh, your piece activity may be the, the mo maybe not the most important uh, issue to, de to deal with. And uh, if your king is unsafe, you really need to worry about it. You need to deal with it immediately. And also, on the other hand, if the opponent has a vulnerable king, this may indicate that you have a pretty nice position that you may simply take over the initiative, start attacking the king immediately. And um, therefore, this is what we're going to begin with. So the first example I would like to show you uh, was taken from a game I played against uh, Croatian Grandmaster Bojan Kureica in 2019. Um, so the game went e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. So we have the Sicilian d4, pawn takes knight, takes d4, knight to f6, knight c3. All of this is very normal, of course. Uh, e6, uh, knight takes c6. There is another move, of course, uh, knight d to b5, which uh, could lead to totally different positions, potentially even transposed to uh, the sufficient variation of the Sicilian. But again, this is not the topic of our uh, of our um, course. So let's just say that knight takes c6 is one of the main moves in this position. Pawn takes c6, e5. All of this is theory. So uh, I'm not really stopping here. Uh, knight d5, knight e4. Uh, White doesn't really want to exchange the, the knights. Uh, instead, uh, the idea is very simple. At one point or another, White might be interested in occupying this a very nice d6 square with the knight. So already it's quite visible that black has certain problems on dark squares, although this is not necessarily going to be a black's problem at this very, um, at this very point, uh, because black has some sort of activity to compensate that. Queen c7, hitting the pawn on e5, f4, protecting that pawn, queen to a5 check. There is an old line like that, uh, and uh, the creation grandmaster decided to, uh, to opt for this check. Mm. I simply reacted with bishop d2, which as far as I remember is again um, the theoretical move. It has been played on numerous occasions, so uh, there is nothing really um, to discuss here. Uh, queen b6, so you might be wondering why black played queen a5 first only to go queen b6 after the queen is kicked back. Well, basically, thanks to this uh, strange triangulation, um, strange um, queen maneuver, uh, right now the queen um, attacks the pawn on b2, and actually the bishop on c1 is pretty much as active as it was. Uh, the bishop on d2 is pretty much as active as it was on c1, so this basically forces a reaction from white. Uh, and my reaction here was bishop d3, so I actually, actually completely ignored uh, the um, pawn which is under attack, um, because one of the aspects I already realized in this game was that I have a nice lead in development. If you start looking at this position, um, it transpires that um, white has already developed two bishops and a knight. The knight is actually beautifully positioned in the center. Uh, it can jump to d6, um, as I pointed out earlier on. So um, black probably shouldn't really waste more time on capturing pawns like that. It's not really a poisoned pawn like you get in other lines of Sicilian. It's um, It was just my choice. It's, it was a legitimate pawn sacrifice. I just thought that if black is going to capture on b2, then after castling, um, white has tremendous compensation for the sacrificed pawn and already it's quite visible that black has certain problems with his uh, peace coordination and the bishops are undeveloped the king is in the center so if white manages uh, to start immediate attack in the center and open the position the vulnerable king uh, the vulnerability of the king might actually be the most important um, aspect of the position so this is what I, what I was aiming for uh, although without really clear variations here to support my uh, my evaluation my Mm, opinion of this position. 
Uh, and after bishop d3, uh, he didn't play queen takes b2. Instead, he opted for uh, a different move, which was um, a5. Mm, now queen e2, bishop to e7, and a3. So we're both developing the pieces. a3 was a bit of a mm, restricting move. One of the aims was to cover the b4 square so that uh, I can, for example, play c4 and not allow the opponent to jump on b4 with the knight because that would attack my uh, bishop on d3. Um, again, this is not that relevant. It's a rather subtle issue, um, which I would like just to, to, to be pointed out here for, for you to understand um, my reasoning here in this game. Uh, as you can see, I'm still ignoring the b2 pawn, which is still hanging, but... Uh, again, the concept was pretty much the same, so as long as black controls this diagonal with his queen, I cannot castle. If the queen captures on b2, okay, I lose the pawn, but I'm fine with that because I'm going to castle, and at this very point I'm going to finish my development. So, uh, a sacrifice of a pawn for quick development and, and the possibility to have active play with uh, plenty of initiative, this can actually be very easily justified. As you probably already know, in the opening, time is the most important factor, not necessarily the material itself. So if you drop a pawn, but at the same time finish your development and maybe even get a, an immediate chance to start attacking your opponent, this might just be um, much better than um, sticking to the material and and developing much uh, in a much slower fashion. So here he played f5 and we're going to slowly approach uh, the most important part of the game, the most interesting part of the game. So after f5 this attacks my uh, precious knight on, on f, uh, on e4 of course uh, I didn't want to uh, to lose it, I didn't want to play knight d6 at this point of the game, I felt like I can maybe use the knight a bit, a bit better, so I just captured in passing, um, captured with the knight, I played bishop c3, so this is just safeguarding the pawn on b2 and uh, putting some pressure on the knight on f6. Nothing more than that, nothing really specific. As you can still see, both kings are placed in the center. It's quite... it's been quite long uh, already. It's been 13 moves uh, without even more, um, actually 15 moves without castling, um, but this is not really a problem for white. So white is prepared to castle queenside and in the meantime uh, of course black could castle kingside. The problem with this uh, is that those bishops might be really dangerous. As you can see they are pointing towards black's kingside uh, and also due to the space advantage white has um, we basically Examine the pawn, the the, um, the space advantage based on the pawn's position. So here it's quite visible that White has a more advanced pawn structure. Um, the the only pawn and the bishops actually control much more space in the center. Uh, e5 square uh, in particular, and also a couple of light squares due to the position of the light squared bishop. And thanks to that. Mm, white will be able to play more actively. It will be more. It will be way easier for White to transfer his pieces from one part of the board, um, possibly queenside, to kingside. So if White manages to launch the attack, it will be much more uh, powerful than any any sort of Black's attack. And also, it will be very simple and fast to transfer pieces from one part of the board to the other. And that usually means a very effective and dangerous attack. So. Black has a king in the center, uh, white has a king in the center, but white can very quickly uh, put it into safety with queenside castle. He can even keep the king in the center, although that's not advisable in general, because in the opening and in the early middle game, what you want to do is to castle to make sure that your king is safe. Uh, and in black's case, it's not that simple, because if the king is, stay if it stays in the center, well, logically, if you manage to open the position even more, uh, it's already quite open, as a matter of fact, because, okay, there are, there is a pawn on d7 and there is a pawn on uh, e6, these pawns, but white might be able to um, 
to use his open half open D and E files. Plus, there is always a possibility to push the pawn, the F pawn to F5, so that uh, well, even more pawns get exchanged, and then possibly um, the E file, either the E file or the D file, is going to be completely open. So if the king stays in the center, it's going to be a problem. If the king castles, it's also going to be not that safe because, as I've shown you, the bishops will probably get very, very dangerous. So black has a huge problem. And this is the main problem here, uh, the main concept here that we are um, considering, the king safety. Due to the unsafe king or potentially unsafe king, um, black really needs to be careful. So all of his efforts needs to, needs to be connected with safeguarding the king's position. Uh, so after bishop c3, uh, he played bishop a6 to simplify the position a little bit. Uh, and at this point, uh, white has a couple of alternatives. It's possible to uh, to take the knight on f6 right away. We can take a look at that. For example, knight takes f6. Um, and now it's not really clear what black is supposed to take with. Uh, I can imagine bishop, bishop capturing f6. And then white can play queen h5 right away. Already giving black a check and starting... Uh, to harass the black king. This is possible. It's also possible to to take on f6 right away and after g takes f6 to go queen h5. And it's quite visible that the black may have some problems with the king safety. Although I felt that if the black stays on e7, it might actually not be uh, so simple to attack the black king. Um, basically, these pawns provide the black king with certain a degree of safety and also my king is not the prettiest uh, either so it's not that clear so before starting any action against the opponent's king i decided to uh, to put my king into safety uh, first queen's eight castle bishop takes d3 and here uh, it is it was quite important first to um, to get rid of this knight on f6 because, well, with the knights the position usually get more tricky. You, you probably already know that uh, certain knights jump might lead to, to much more complex positions. Uh, and simplicity is what white is looking for. So knight takes f6 with a check in between move. Bishop takes f6, queen takes d3. And now everything is quite evident. Uh, white has a very safe king. Okay, there is an open B file, but everything is protected. The pawn on B2 in particular, it is well protected by the bishop. There is nothing really going on after potential exchange of the bishops on C3. So, for example, well, not really at this point because white also has a queen takes D7 threat. Uh, but if you can imagine just uh, black exchanging on C3 at some point, white might just recapture with the queen and protect this pawn on b2 so everything is going to be perfectly fine for white uh, at the same at the same time black has a huge problem the king stays in the center um, the pawn on d7 is hanging if it falls then the black king is just going to be maybe even checkmated in a moment uh, due to the lack of any pieces or pawns protecting it and also castling kingside uh, well it's not really possible at this very moment. Uh, and even if that happens, potentially the position is going to be open. This is what actually um, happened in the game. So black played rook d8. Uh, technically, it was possible to castle kingside. And perhaps from a practical point of view, this was, the, um, this was black's best try. Just to give up the pawn, face the music and play without the pawn. Of course... Um, even though this is technically technically possible, um, Black's chances to equalize the game are not really realistic. So after the exchange, Rook takes f6. I don't believe Pawn takes, G Pawn takes f6 um, brings Black any relief. And then after simply Queen takes d7, uh, this is this is just um, pos positionally much better for White. White has a a healthy pawn, um, pawn more and no problems whatsoever. In the meantime, black has as many as uh, four pawn islands. 
white has a much better pawn pawn structure. The king is a bit safer. Uh, all of those pawns, c6 and e6, they can be potential targets. So uh, the advantage is quite quite evident. So for this reason, uh, my opponent decided not to castle, and instead he played uh, rook to d8. So he decided to play um, rook d8, which seems to be on one hand understandable, because dropping the pawn on d7 leaves black with a horrible position. On the other, this still means that the black king safety will likely become the most important factor. So whenever you evaluate the position as such, uh, and you see that your opponent's king is in danger, and that is it is vulnerable, it will be possible to attack such a king, that potentially means that you have the advantage. Uh, you don't have a material advantage, but you have a positional advantage. Positional advantage means that you have more uh, that you have better chances of winning the game and actually when you realize that your position is better that's not the end of your of your that shouldn't be the end of your thought process uh, basically whenever you establish that your position is better you are supposed to attack it's not a privilege it's basically a must um, because otherwise if you don't start attacking if you just play some slow moves trying to improve your position gradually uh, your advantage might just uh, evaporate. It might not be on the board anymore because your opponent might be able to um, to defend himself, to improve his uh, his king safety, his overall peace coordination, and uh, with slow play you might actually just um, allow your opponent to equalize. So having a better position not only due to king safety, but generally having a better position uh, implies that you are supposed to play actively, aggressively, and potentially even just start attacking right away. There is no uh, time to uh, to waste. So here, this is exactly what I went for. I realized that my opponent has a temporary problem with the king safety, but if I allow him to castle, for example, uh, then he might be able, well, maybe not equalize. I knew that positionally, Considering the pawn structure, especially that uh, backward pawn on d7, I could still maintain the advantage, but that would be much uh, smaller advantage than as compared to this particular position. So, active actions are required, and therefore, um, here I played bishop takes f6. Um, he took back with the pawn and queen c3. Queen c3 is a Quite a cunning move. Uh, basically, white is attacking the pawn on f6. Uh, if black decides to castle kingside, then, as mentioned before, this pawn on d7 might prove to be a target. So, for example, castles, uh, now rook d6. And with those pawns being so fixed, uh, rook uh, coming to d1, it's quite clear that black is going to suffer a lot. His pieces will have to remain very passive, and white can just attack the pawn on d7 and potentially also with a rook lift uh, in a moment the king might also be in danger so with those two weaknesses i think black's position is practically hopeless to be honest so that didn't happen and my opponent of course realized that how so he decided uh, to play a bit more actively uh, and therefore he played king e7 this is an attempt to cover d6 square to cover f6 pawn but this actually means now this was the first moment I was sure that, yes, I will be able to attack my opponent's king. But again, this had to be done very uh, aggressively, otherwise black can consolidate uh, with, some, um, with some defensive moves, uh, maybe just activate the rook along g file, the other along b file, certain moves can be found. Um, so it's much better to start attacking right away. So here, um, I decided that uh, further opening of the position is required, and that's usually the the plan when you have uh, your opponent, uh, when you see your opponent having such a weak king. In order to open the position, as usual, you need to exchange some pawns. Uh, so finding targets is is really really essential. Uh, this is my target. So g4, g5 was the next. Um, was the, the idea and this is how it was executed. Uh, g4, 
rook h to f8, f5, g5 could potentially be played, but this pawn is already protected, so f5 seemed a bit more natural here after f5. I'm already threatening to, to exchange on e6. If he plays e5, I can just play g5, and as you see, um, it becomes quite dangerous. Also, the queen can be transferred, rook to e1 can be played just to x ray the pawn and the king. Uh, this is quite difficult for black. So, after f5, um, he played rook g8. So, in this position, I came to a conclusion that, um, well, even though I have some possibilities to open the position, they are still not satisfactory. If I exchange on e6, he's going to recapture with the pawn and, uh, well, the king is still going to be um, sufficiently protected. There is not so many pieces on the board, so the attack is actually quite tricky. Normally you have bishops, you have knights, so you can give more checks, you can create uh, certain threats pretty much effortlessly. Here, this requires certain attacking technique. Uh, and um, my general advice for you is that in such positions, so in positions when you have the advantage, you know you have the advantage because your opponent suffers from uh, a certain aspect of the position. Here this is king safety. In case of uh, vulnerable king this is particularly important. So the advice is that you need to keep on creating threats, keep on posing your opponent with practical problems, with decisions to be made. Uh, difficult decisions preferably, so that you maintain the initiative and you make your opponent solve practical problems over the board. So even though there are some targets here, the pawn e6, the pawn on f6, I decided to create even more threats by playing queen to h3. This is what I believe to be a very strong move. Actually, black still had a couple of tricky resources, but uh, they were also pretty much impossible to find, to be found over the board, uh, even by a strong grandmaster. Here, black was apparently supposed to play h5 just to sacrifice the pawn in a good version, uh, although uh, that um, that wasn't so so clear and and simple. So um, my opponent played rook g7, and here I came up with a very strong idea: a pawn sacrifice. A sacrifice which uh, crashes through black's defense and this was g5 so now i don't really mind losing a pawn even two if i have to as long as i manage to open the king safety as as long as i manage to get access proper access to my opponent's uh, king here the files are still closed exchanging pawns helps white to open those files and diagonals uh, i'm already threatening to take on f6 and when that happens I will be able just to start giving checks, uh, putting pressure on the opponent's king and there, there will have to be either checkmate or a possibility to win some material. So g5, uh, this was met with rook f8, captures don't really help white at all. One line that could be presented is f takes g5, now queen h6 hitting the rook and also creating some threats here. Uh, and after rook f7, well, there is a couple of possibilities for white. The queen takes g5 is okay. Uh, f takes e6 is also very dangerous. So it's impossible to survive that uh, from, from black's perspective. So instead, uh, my opponent decided to play rook f8. And this looks like a very sensible move. Um, I played rook h to e1. So as you can see, white's pieces are just beautifully positioned uh, and there are already certain threats. Uh, for example, um, if he plays, well, something like e5, I might just take on f6 and then take on e5. So that's a huge problem. If he doesn't react, I will just take on e6. So there's just way too many threats for black to survive this. And of course, his peace coordination is also very bad. Uh, he decided to take with the pawn on g5, and after queen h6, he just resigned in view of the following threats. Queen takes g7, and for example, after rook f7, uh, I can even take on e6 either with the pawn, possibly even with the rook. This looks like a quite a spectacular mo motif, because after d takes e6, queen takes e6 wins. And as a matter of fact, I could even start by capturing with the queen. If he takes, then this is quite a beautiful checkmate. Uh, 
on the other hand, capturing in chess is not compulsory, so there is always a possibility of escaping to d8. Still, f takes e6 would be just the simplest, cleanest and winning pretty much on spot. In the next move, uh, I will take on d7 with either the pawn or the rook, it doesn't really matter. All of those moves are really crushing, the black king is not safe at all. So, the main takeaway for you from this game should be that uh, whenever you realize that your opponent's king is in danger, you need to act very actively. Um, so, first of all, the vulnerable king likely means that there is a, that you may have the advantage already. Otherwise, uh, well, unless this is uh, compensated by a lot of other positional factors, but normally, typically, you will have the advantage if your opponent's king is. Uh, in danger and then you are supposed to play very actively aggressively create threats maintain the initiative uh, because otherwise your opponent will uh, or might be able to escape might be able to consolidate improve his king's position and you will just not have the advantage anymore so i hope you enjoyed watching this game and uh, feel free to proceed to to the next video uh, where you're going to see some other aspects of the king safety.